What would you say to parents who want to get vasectomies because they don't want to, who want to get vasectomies because they don't want to have more kids? I've heard the expression. It's about quality, not quantity. Um, it's actually about both. Um, this idea that it needs to be one or the other is a false dichotomy. A vasectomy is the deliberate mutilation of your reproductive capacities because you don't wish to exercise self-mastery over them. It is a sin. It was condemned in the Old Testament. It's very clear. It even talks about men whose testicles are crushed are not to enter into the temple of God. Like It's very clear. Like This is a deliberate mutilation of the human body. This was practiced in ancient Roman times. The early Christians outright condemned it, and the churches always condemned it because the purpose of medicine is to aid in the healthy functioning of the human body. And so what vasectomies are is medicine in reverse. It's taking a, a system of the body that's functioning as it should, and it's causing it to enter into a dysfunctional state. There's also a host of side effects that can come with this because, for one, you're still producing hundreds of millions of sperm a day, but now they have no way of escaping through the natural route of the body, and they actually enter into the man's body, are absorbed into the bloodstream where antibodies need to be created to deal with all of this, and there have been all kinds of health consequences that are negative associated with this. Now, obviously, vasectomies are rampant in the culture today because a lot of guys, out of a good desire, are like, look, uh, I'll go under the knife uh, because my wife is kind of overwhelmed and we can kind of do this and then we're not have to worry about her getting pregnant again. And so it has the, the trappings in a sense, this virtue signaling of an act of love that I'm you know making a sacrifice for love of you, but underneath it, it there's a selfishness of like, hey, we're not gonna have to worry about this anymore. We can kind of indulge in the sexual act without any of its life-giving effects. And so what God has joined together, babies and bonding, we're splitting that now we can have the bonding, but we don't have to worry about the babies. What if we did the opposite? What if like, well, I want babies from you, but I don't want bonding from you. And so I'll sleep with you, but I'm not gonna look at you because I wanna kind of avoid any emotional entanglement that might ensue from our one flesh union. So I'm just gonna look otherwhere, elsewhere and think about other things. Like, dude, that's a really weird person. Like he's using your body as like an incubator for his offspring. That's not making love because he is broken in half. He's divorced what God has joined, life-giving love. If for a good reason, it's not time to have kids, or you know, hey, we can't have any more kids, health reasons, whatever, you can fall back upon natural family planning, which according to the British Medical Journal is more than 99% effective. If you simply get online and you type in like vasect vasectomy or regret, things like that, there's websites, there's ministries, like encourage, there's even books out there encouraging guys, look, just read our testimonies of why we thought this was the right decision for our family, and then we realized we had made a big mistake. And thankfully, at least with vasectomies, oftentimes it can be reversed. Often, obviously, with the tubal ligation, if the woman is getting her tubes tied, reversing that ain't so easy. Um, but with, with a, a vasectomy, now the church teaches that you don't have to get a vasectomy or reversal if you're repented from that sin. But, you know, it, it would be something I think that would be wise to look into because maybe God's plan for your family might be different than your plan for your family. And, you know, unfortunately in the world nowadays, I think I'd seen that like, and some people, as they get older, say, look, we're afraid if we're going to get pregnant. We're in our early 40s. I've heard that there's a huge rate of having a Down syndrome baby if it's a you know, late pregnancy like this. And I, I saw a stat recently. It said like nine out of 10 Down syndromes babies are being aborted right now. I mean, it's like literally heartbreaking. Don't close off God's plan for your family, no matter what it may be, because his plan in all eternity will be infinitely better than yours. And look, I know what it's like to have a big family. We got eight kids. It's stressful. We're up at night. I was up last night, two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. Like, yeah, it's tough. But you know what? These years are going to pass. These tough years are going to pass. And the blessing of having them with you, God willing, before the beatific vision in heaven, before God for all eternity is infinitely of greater value than any stress of having some extra kids now. Because if you look historically at big families, we're just, it's just the way it was. I mean, people had eight kids, nine kids, 12 kids, basically all the families up until the last 50 years ago. And now you see someone with like four kids, like, wow, you have a really big family. Dude, God's gonna bless you if you trust him. I mean, I took six of the kids out to dinner the other night and I'm sitting there having dinner and uh, you know, waitress comes over. I'm like, hey, I just wanna give you the credit card bill. And she said, oh, thanks, but your bill's already been covered by that family over there. And I look over and there's two old people on a double date with two other old people. And they saw me just there with six of the kids. And they're like, yeah, we wanna cover that guy's bill. And so, and I said, okay, well, I'll have the Dom Perignon and the lobster tail, please. We're gonna add on. Um, but God is gonna bless you if you trust him. Think of trust 
as a key that unlocks a limitless vault of graces that God wants to bestow upon you. But if we don't have that key, if we don't have that trust, we begin grasping. We begin distrusting the Father and taking our, our plans for our own life into our hands and we miss out on the blessings that he wants to give to you. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that little clip, but if you want to see the whole episode where this came from, just click the link here. And in the meantime, we want to invite you to help us share this message, and there's a couple things you can do real quick. Number one, if you like or comment or share this video, YouTube will actually show it to more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. We release videos every single day, and you'll be notified as soon as those come out. If you want to help us also to spread this message, you can support us at patreon.com slash Jason Everett. That helps us to create these videos and show them to the whole world. God bless.